What's up everybody? Uh, today I want to go over why I am leaving New York. Yep, I am leaving. I am escaping from this hellhole. I have been ready to leave for a while and today I want to kind of break it down. First things I'm going to go over some pros and cons and then some final things that are relevant to the time period just in general what's going on in New York uh, that I didn't like whether it's thriving or not. All right, so one of the first most important things that I love the most uh, it is about New York was the food. It is some of the best food I've ever had in my life. When I left New York after living here for a little short period of time, I had food. I went uh, with some friends to a new restaurant, like, oh, this place is so good. And I would try it out, and it wasn't. And I didn't have the heart to tell them that it wasn't so good because I was spoiled, and that's what happened. And you kind of, I didn't know what I didn't know when it came to food in New York. It seriously has the best. And it's funny because at first, I thought the food here was great. Yeah, that's awesome. But once you become accustomed to it and it's the norm, when you take it away or you try anything else, it's just nothing can compete. And, that, and that's just the truth of it. And since this whole thing worldwide is happening, 2,000 plus restaurants have closed just in Manhattan. The food places have limited everything. You can't sit there, the atmosphere is gone. There's so much about the food lifestyle that is just gone. So what was so awesome and one of the greatest things that I love so much about it, it's gone. Or it's, it's, it's just diminished so much that it's like, okay, well, okay, so the food's gone. Now, when it comes to getting around New York, it's kind of this bittersweet thing. It's the best subway system, I think, ever in the world. Uh, although it has its flaws, of course, it's not perfect, but it's pretty great. And, uh, you know, before, you can just get everywhere. I didn't need a car anymore. Uh, the parking was never really awesome here, and that is a downside that I'll talk about later, but for the most part, getting around, I didn't have to have the car, I didn't have to have the insurance. It was really easy. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes to get anywhere that you need to go. The thing is, now it's this awkward, kind of eerie feeling going to the subway. I've seen a lot more homeless people on the subway than I had before. It was never really this excellent experience, to be honest. But the commuting, it's just not really what it used to be. Also, I don't really have anywhere to go because everything's closed. Just recently, like right in the beginning of this whole thing that's happening, I was sitting there and some guy's screaming and he's rubbing one out in the corner. And he looks over and I can see his... That's one of the things with New York is, if you live here, you're gonna see some like, that's just kind of how it goes. You're gonna see something really foul. I'm not even gonna go into any of the disgusting stuff, but that's getting pretty close. Commuting is just kind of not, it's not there anymore. It never really was perfect, uh, but it had its pros. It, it was actually pretty good, <laughs> despite <laughs> what I was just saying about how, how awful it is and the, like these negatives. The underlying factor is that it's there and it runs all night, anytime. If you're drunk at 3 a.m. leaving the bar 4 a.m., you're gonna get home just fine. It's pretty safe, believe it or not. I mean, I don't, I don't need it. I, I used the subway once in the past five, six months because there's nowhere to really go because everything's closed. So what was so good about it is now not needed. I haven't needed to go anywhere. There's nowhere to go. Everything's closed. All my shopping, if I do spend money, which I really, really try to avoid, I do on Amazon or Autorama or b &H or whatever. I basically only buy gear, like that's kind of it. And uh, I mean, I just bought some knives, of course, but what else am I gonna buy? Food, I told you the restaurants aren't really there or thriving or you can't sit down and dine. Well, what am I gonna buy? I go to the grocery store and I make my own food and then I work and that's, uh, that's about it. And I, when I say work, I mean I do stuff as productive to education and pursuing lifelong goals long term, but there's nothing immediate or anywhere to go. All right, let's touch on dating really quick. One of the best things uh, for sure when I got to New York was dating. I met a lot of girls um, and they were really interesting, really different than a lot of the girls in my hometown. Um, it just, it's a whole different place. I mean, some of my best girlfriends I've ever had in my life uh, came from New York, some of my hardest heartbreaks came here, 
Uh, everything is so wonderful about the women I've met here. And uh, the downside is that now that's not how it is. There's nobody who's really dating right now. There's a lot of weird, you know, social distancing and stuff like that. And it can be really, really difficult to get to know somebody new. As well as uh, one of the other things about dating, now I'm 40, uh, I don't really want to be casually dating. And a lot of the women that I'm attracting here, at least, are, you know, they're really flaky. Uh, they don't really want some really long-term relationship. They just want to hook up. You know, you have, I used to have, say, three to five dates a week. And uh, then, you know, you hook up with a few of them and then you see one of them again the following weeks. And I don't know, it's just, it gets old fast. I'd like to be in a place where somebody appreciates somebody who's a little bit more ready to settle down. So yeah, dating is kind of not really there right now. I'm sure it'll be back, but right now, I'm, I don't know. I don't know how to play this game with the social distancing. It's really strange. So yeah, dating is just not happening. Now, when it comes to this whole dating thing, let's say I did hook up a date and everything, what am I gonna do? So we go for a walk, cool. Can we go to a bar? Not really. You can dine outside and have a drink but it's kind of weird, it's like a little awkward. Then you have this mask stuff on all the time. It's really uncomfortable. I feel like it's exhausting mentally to always have a mask on. You know, you can't really go to museums. You can't thrive in a park without that carefree element. There's so many people around. You know, the list goes on and on. I don't have to break down each detail, but the point is that what are you gonna do? Now, you can be creative. I'm sure people do it very excellent. I mean, there's very high skilled daters out there. And sure, I'm sure they have awesome solutions. But me, for a common person, just, you know, just going on a date without being super good at planning a whole event, I'm so used to having the world open. Hey, let's go to a museum. Hey, let's go to this art show. You wanna go to a concert, you wanna go to a bar. All that normal stuff, it's not there. So the point is, what are you gonna do if there's nothing to do? Most people actually would say it's first place is money, career. You know, everything that you want to do and accomplish in life, I feel like is one of the most important things you can do. And money kind of goes in hand in hand with it. For this particular conversation right now, I'm talking about money because the money I've made here is incredible. I've never made so much money in my life. The point is that you can make a lot of money. There is a lot of money here for people. Now for what I'm doing, the money in the particular field and the skill sets that I have, it dried up. The work's no longer there. I used to work on assets that the assets are footage that was created for commercials, music videos, whatever. Uh, nobody's filming. Nobody's creating anything due to this whole time. So it's like, no work. It's all dried up. But now, pretty much staff has taken over all of these small, piddly diddly work. There's nothing new, nothing major, nothing overflowing what the staff can't take care of. And then another thing about this is because I am not making any income now, uh, at least not here, uh, my lease is actually ending, so I would have to move out and I have this sweet deal where I'm living. And now, because the lease is up, I have to pay more to stay with no income. It just doesn't make sense. So, if money and career are what I vote as the second most important thing, what's the number one? And I would say that has to do with the people. People in New York are the nicest people you'll ever meet. The thing is, they're so inclusive, uh, the fact that my career has taken off because of the network that I've built and the fact that all the parties I've gone to, the people who didn't know me and just say, yeah, come along. Uh, I didn't have to fit in with their clique beforehand. There was no weird social problems about who goes who. It's just all together. It's the melting pot, as they say. And it's true. The people here are so incredibly nice now, people have this image of New Yorkers and they're so angry and, you know, yeah, we're angry because tourists stop in the middle of the sidewalk or try to get on the subway before everybody else gets off. Like, you don't pull into a parking spot until somebody leaves. Like, there's some common sense things that just drive you crazy. You know, you ask a New Yorker just generally, oh, hey, where do we go? I'm lost, whatever. They're gonna help you, but they're, they have somewhere to go. They, they have something to do, so they're gonna be like, yeah, that way, cool, good. And then they leave. 
and that's it. They're, they're the best. And even the people that you may not really, I'm not really fond of and say homeless and panhandlers, uh, they're not all the same. You know, one homeless person is not the same as another. So I'm actually friends with a few homeless people in my hood and I know them by name and they're awesome. And like, you know, I go for a run and I hang out with them for a bit. That's kind of New York. Everybody's an actual person who doesn't need some qualification from some social status or some niche. And uh, you know, the people I've hang out in like say the West Coast, it was, it was like, what, what kind of material possessions do you have? Who are you friends with? All that stuff here, it's like they don't give a crap who you're friends with, all that stuff. Yeah, there are groups like that, but I would say the majority don't care. And they just like you and they like you for who you are. And I would say if you were to ever move to New York or look for a place where normally you just never belonged and you want to find a place and find a lid to your pot, New York is the place. They are the best people in the world. Uh, and that's why I'm going to come back and visit is they're just incredible people hands down, the number one thing, and I'm gonna miss that, and there's nothing about that that has changed. I think they're resilient, and there is no cons to that during these times, I think that people are tighter. I will say, however, however, if I'm going to be nitpicky about how things have changed about the people, I think the political voice, the social justice, the cancel culture, all that stuff is so loud and so maddening to me, I hate it so much. I, it's, things that I just really, really just don't want to hear about it, I don't believe in. Um, but luckily there's enough people that, here that I can ignore the people that try to cancel everybody. So yeah, that's, that's the best part of New York. And I am going to miss the people. And hopefully I get to stay in touch with all of them and visit them in the future. Now I just lost a list of notes, so I'm just gonna kind of rattle off a few of the major things that aside from everything, that I've just had it with New York. First thing, the small spaces. I'm really, really sick of just being crammed all the time. Then there's laundry. I'm sick of doing laundry at a laundromat. This is the first time in my life that I've ever had to do this. A lot of people think it's a joke. It's not a joke. This is how New Yorkers live in most, most cases. As far as nature goes, I really thrive with greenery and being outside and going for hikes and things like that. Uh, there is just a concrete jungle. I see some grass right over here. If you just look over there, there's some grass, and that's and that's kind of how much grass you see. It just generally, it's 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 not great place for thriving in a nature abundant way. Then the noise. I don't know if I mentioned the noise. Uh, it just gets to you. I mean, I literally have people hammering on my windows or a jackhammer outside my door. Uh, there's panhandlers and people just screaming that are absolutely insane. Uh, you know a New Yorker, if you ever see somebody scream and nobody looks over, they just know it's just part of being here. Uh, that's how you know a New Yorker. So many reasons, those little ones, this and this and that, they all add up. I've just been done with New York for a while. So regardless of what's happening in the world, I've just had it. It's, it's no longer the place that suits me or fits my living, what I want to do. I want to be outside more. I want to thrive and run around, go camping and go for hikes, do my own thing that doesn't revolve around big corporations or advertising consumer goods that I don't believe in. And, and just New York is so great for so many things. And it really adds credibility and there's a lot to learn. You can really grow as a person, but I've grown a lot. And I feel like for right now, it's time for me to go. And I hope this video kind of gives you some insight and just kind of share why I'm leaving and what I've been thinking about. And, you know, the list goes on and on. I've, I'm sure I've missed a lot of things, but it's irrelevant. I think you can understand my attitude, my idea of what I'm just not feeling about New York right now. And maybe I'll come back or this is just a great place to visit, but I'm not sure if I really would just want to live here. No matter how much I might be thriving in the future or at alternate times in my life, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it, and if you did, like it, because it helps the algorithm. Subscribe, keep in touch, and stay, and hit that bell. Watch all the videos, because in the future, this video, this whole channel, everything's gonna be changing in a new direction. A lot more geared towards a better way of living, towards uh, men that follow my interests, 
Uh, and now I am gearing towards a modern man and somebody a little bit more like me. Just because I'm geared towards somebody does not mean I'm against anybody else. Just wanna put that out there. I'll make a whole nother video on that. Stay tuned, hit that bell, subscribe, like all that business. I think it's gonna be really interesting. So the next videos that I'm gonna be making, I'm gonna be on Cape Cod, a lot more gr greenery and a lot more just awesome stuff. So until then, cheers.